So it was prescribed fire. And that day, it wasn't, we weren't lighting or anything. Um, it was more just a, a secure what we already had. Um, I believe they were concerned about some winds or something like that. So um, we just went out there and um, we were just building some, some check lines here and there on, on some of the stuff we lit. Where I was, it was a, it was a little slop over with, that we had on our lines and I was kind of between two large rocks. And um, we dug line between these two rocks where we had there and me and my saw partner and one other guy were all left there to kind of just to um, hold that little area and just make sure it's okay. There is a, I believe, three pretty small snags in there that um, had some heat in them that I was going to secure up. It's a rocky area, like there's a lot of like rock bluffs and stuff like that, kind of hilly and rocky with just some of those trees mixed in between. It was kind of a hot area and it was kind of just um, a lot of ash pits and stuff like that that were kind of just keeping it, keeping it hot. So um, I didn't go in there immediately. We, we kind of just hung out there for a little while um, just to kind of let it cool down before I ever went in there to, to do anything with the snags. I cut the first snag and I kind of, I fell it up on one of the rocks that we were using as a natural barrier. And uh, I didn't really like it, just kind of like that. It was kind of a holding concern because the fire could just kind of burn up the tree. And I just kind of wanted to secure it up there. So I was up on the rock kind of just bucking pieces off the tree. Chainsaw, um, I was running, it was, it was running fine and nothing noticeable about the chainsaw. And then uh, I got done doing what I was doing. I was satisfied with how I secured up the tree and uh, I just set, shut my saw off like normal. I walked back over to where my saw partner was and he was um, away from the black up in a comfortable, cool spot. And um, I went and I, I sat next to him and I sat my, set my chainsaw down next to me. and. Um, we were just up there talking, we were talking about the next tree I was gonna cut and just kind of looking at stuff and just um, hanging out for a little while. It was probably um, a good 15 to 20 minutes, I'm not sure, but it was, it was a good little chunk of time that we were just hanging out there. So uh, after, after we hung out there, like I said, for 15 to 20 minutes, um, I, I decided I was ready to cut the next tree. Um, so I grabbed, I grabbed my chainsaw and, and I walked into the black and uh, I walked over to a tree and there's, there's a rock I was standing on that I was gonna cut it from. And there's some, some ash pits around me. And uh, there happened to be like a little, a little piece of open flame just like right by kind of where I was standing. But uh, so I went in there and uh, I went to start my chainsaw and uh, I gave it a couple pulls and it, it turned over, but it just kind of, you know, gargled it for a second and then died, kind of like when you run out of gas. The first thing in, in my chainsaw troubleshooting mind, you know, was like, hey, maybe I was over there cutting that a little longer than I thought I was, and maybe I used more gas than I thought I was. Maybe, maybe I'm actually out of gas. And uh, my, my first reaction to check that was just to kind of flip the saw over on the side on my hip and. Uh, Pop the cap just to look inside to see see how much was in there, and uh, at that point is where um, it geysered on me, and it was uh, pretty two distinct pretty geyser spurts that came out of my gas tank at that point, and uh, I I couldn't exactly tell you how high it got, but I mean it had to be over a foot above the tank. It was the biggest the biggest one I've seen. I don't I don't know why I can explain to you why it was so volatile that time, but. Um, of all the ones I've seen, yeah, that one is definitely the, the most, the biggest one. I didn't catch on fire immediately, like I had, I had enough time to look at it and kind of have a oh crap moment, if you will, with what happened, because I, I knew that, I mean, I'd, I'd heard the stories and uh, we, we've done training on it, you know, so I knew I, w I wasn't in a good place at that time and my, my saw partner who was watching, he, he actually yelled at me. Um, to watch out because um, he saw the, just the little piece of like open flame right there um, that was kind of near me. At that point, um, I ignited, <laughs> if you will, kind of sounds weird to say that, but um, I caught fire and at first like my, I didn't have a dra dramatic reaction to that. I dropped the chainsaw first off, but uh, kind of just patted at my shoulder like trying to put it out and uh, it just got bigger. I want to say is like my arm kind of this whole right side of my body is kind of kind of went up in flame and uh I mean it's kind of hard to tell it's like kind of burning off the back of me at that point I kind of I kind of realized I was in more more of a trouble 
and uh, I didn't really have a good spot to go because of all the hot ash pits around me and I was aware of that I was like man I just don't have a good good spot so uh, I made a beeline for the hand line we dug stuntman style with some some flames coming off me and uh once I hit the hand line I just uh I dropped to the ground and just rolled over and my my saw partner good dude that he is jumped on top of me and threw some dirt on me and um put me out even after I got myself out I I was pretty calm about the whole situation. Um, I just, I got the radio from my saw partner and I just made the notifications to my supervisor. And uh, I knew I was pretty badly burned. Um, well, you could obviously just see the skin hanging off your arm. And I knew my stomach was burned, but nobody, nobody else could tell that because my clothes were completely fine. There's no sign really that they caught fire. Um, and I'm still not sure why that is. Like I was wearing my gloves and none of my hands got burned and um, you could actually see the kind of the line from exactly where my gloves were and I knew I had to get out of there and I just figured like the the sooner better the better rather than waiting and I just I got up and I just started walking out. It was probably a quarter mile or so, not real far up the hill. By this point I had some people come, some EMTs and uh, check me out and I was like nah I'm just gonna keep walking like I'm just gonna get out of here like you guys can't do anything for me I just need to go to a hospital. Somebody had driven the soup truck down a ways and um, they just loaded me up in the back of the soup truck and drove me up to where the helicopter was gonna fly me to, uh, to a burn center. So. It, it all happened pretty quick um, from when I got burned to, to actually when I got to the hospital it was about an hour. So. This, this isn't the first time I've seen this by no means. Um, I've seen it happen quite a few times over, over my career. I mean, when it's vapor locked, your saw is not gonna run right. So that's one of the things, if your sta saw starts running funky or if it like dies when you're in the middle of cutting something hot, you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta vapor lock. This time that it happened to me, um, it completely caught me off guard because it, it didn't match up to any, any of the signs that I recognized before. When it happened to me before, it, it'd always be in, a, in an obvious, like, you're cutting something hot, like a hot burning juniper, and uh, you, you just know your chainsaw's getting hot or your chainsaw starts running a little funky, and you're like, oh, and you know my chainsaw's getting hot. You know, you could just kind of, you could feel your chainsaw and it's hot, you know. But I wasn't cutting anything that was burning, and the uh, chainsaw, it was, you know, was running fine, like, no signs. Like, I just shut it off like normal. One of the ways they say, oh, you're, you're supposed to, to clear a, a vapor lock or whatever is you let your saw sit there for you know 15 minutes and in my mind my saw just sitting there for that 15 minutes I didn't think there was a chance of that really happening in my mind. If I had even the thought that uh, my saw would have geysered I obviously wouldn't have opened my cap where I did but like I said I had nothing to make me believe that it would happen. Yeah, and that's why I feel like um, now I, I couldn't really I couldn't really predict it. Um, I mean, I was surprised once; I could probably be surprised again. The advice I'd give is, yeah, just I mean, if you're in a situation where you feel like your fuel could catch you on fire by opening it, I just wouldn't do it. I mean, it's as simple as that. You got a flammable substance; you um, you want to separate it from like a heat source. Because, I mean, there's ways you could check your, your fuel level without ever opening your tank. You could literally hold your saw up and look. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see because the saws get dirty and whatnot, but you can definitely see if there's fuel in there or not. If I'm in the black and, you know, I'm going to look through my tank to look to see at my gas level instead of opening the cap, you know? And if I, if I need to go open my cap, I'm going to take it to a safe spot to do that. And I never thought I would just, you know, get hurt by opening my fuel tank, you know, it's just not one of those things that um, you recognize that much as being like a major hazard. Um, and I still think it's kind of funny, you know, that, um, you know, of all the years, that's, that's kind of what, what put me in the hospital. Something as small and simple as that, you know. I definitely don't feel like I can predict it anymore. So I, I just don't think it's worth betting on. 
when your tank's gonna geyser or not and just kind of treat it maybe like it's always always good geyser and just kind of put yourself in a better place whenever whenever you're planning on opening the cap. <laughs>